distinguished chief guests, Professor Virendra Singh Chauhan, Chancellor of B.S. Abdul Rahman Crescent Institute of Science and Technology, Mr. B.S.A. Ali Bohari Rahman, Pro Chancellor of our institution, Mr. Abdul Kadir Abdul Rahman Bohari, our guest of honor, Sheikh Hani Abdulaziz Ahmad Saab, Director General Alpha Nia, Electromechanical Company Limited and Board Member, Jiddah Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Sheikh Mazan Mohammed Ibrahim Patarji, Vice President, Patarji Holding Company, and Vice Chairman, Jiddah Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Sheikh Os Mohammed Os Osama Fadil Mohammed Khairi Al Kabani, Founder MOK Architects, eminent members of the Board of Management of Base Abdurrahman Preferred Institute of Science and Technology, all respected members of the Academic Council, the Finance Committee, the Planning and Monitoring Board, the Registrar, the Controller of Examinations, and other key officers of Crescent Institution, deans, directors, heads of department, and faculty members. Our alumni, graduates, parents, press, media persons, and ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Crescent Institution and on my own behalf, I extend a very warm welcome to you all to this eighth annual convocation of B.S. Abdurrahman Crescent Institute of Science and Technology. I am delighted to be amongst you. I feel this is a privilege to be standing in front of you. I also add my welcome uh, to the invited guests. And I see a large number of them coming from long distances. A special welcome to uh, all of you for being here. I also Welcome the parents, invited guests, and above all, all the students of, of the university who will be graduating and otherwise who are part of this university. Convocation Day is an important day in any student's life. It marks a landmark. It although marks a landmark when you leave this place, but it also signals a landmark that for your journey forward. It's a day of celebration, it's a day of happiness, it's a day of joy. But at the same time, this is a day when you also have the feeling of leaving the integral part of your life behind. Your teachers, your well-wisher, your friends. But that's what this life is about, this is what the university life is about. Your parents, your well-wisher, everybody is around you for your children. And I heartily congratulate you. I'm going to just share a few random thoughts with you on this day. I don't want to bore you with the uh, higher education problems all over the world, particularly in this country. So, uh, it is often said and believed, and there is much written about, that the higher education indices in any country is a sign of development for that country. So uh, there's something called gross enrollment ratios. So the countries that are very highly advanced, Western countries, have very high GERs, as they're called. And your living standards, your social behaviors, your law and order situation seem to reflect higher GER as the GER goes. So this point is not debated uh, anymore. India still has a GER in mid-20s. It hovers around 23, 24, in comparison to, let's say, Scandinavian country, which would touch about 90, or highly developed country would be 80, 85. Those of you who are not familiar with GER, it simply means those of us who are in, gone to school in 23, if you can go beyond school, and that number. So that number still is 23, 24 in this country. That includes all the distance education. Therefore, the point that the vice chancellor made that you are among the highly privileged class is very astute. 
And not only you are part of that 23 GDR, you are pretty much at the top of the heap of that 24%. So you are extremely uh, privileged to have received education in one of the finest institutions in the country. I believe that no privilege uh, comes without responsibility. And therefore, responsibility of many things that education should bring at the top of that would be the, the, your, your service to society and the so-called nation building process. So I'm just going to focus on these two rather than give you a long lecture. The education all over the world changed very rapidly in the late 70s, 80s. It's expanded, middle class grew. And as you receive the education from school to the university versus those who received education in 70, I think the narratives were different. Now education, the, the colleges or the universities have this are assuming this responsibility that if you come to university, I have to skill you to find a job the day you leave the university. Education did not mean this. Going to university simply meant that you went to a place for three years or five years, meet lots of people, listen to different ideas, learn patience, and learn to be a good citizen. <coughs> university is supposed to do that even today. It's supposed to give you moral ethical values. But in addition, the university has the responsibility of skilling them. And you hear this word again and again. So these narratives are not going to change. Your responsibility would be that not to forget that your education is to find a job for yourself, look after yourself, look after your family, look after your parents, look after your teacher. But go beyond that. And that's what education is about. I think Vice Chancellor touched upon this. Your responsibility would be what you can do for the society. You read anyone, those who wrote well, Martin Luther King, Swami Vivekananda, you read Mahatma Gandhi, <coughs> read anyone, Molana, uh, Abul Kala, whoever you will read. The central in the message of receiving higher education would be one, that your religion and your duty is served to serve the society. In fact, if you look at the readings of Newman and Humboldt, uh, who set up uh, universities in Germany, it is a stated motto that those who come to be educated in the university's job is to look after the society. The word is to serve the society. So I leave that point, so keep that in mind when you go out, your primary job is to, and then what is nation building? India is a ancient civilization, but as a nation, as a country, it's very young. In fact, if you go into the history book, there, you could argue there was no India. There were small states brought together by some amazing people, and now we are united together in the 70s. But as a civilization, as culture, as religious unity, it's, a, it's an ancient civilization. It has amazing uh, challenges. When the freedom was obtained, there were hardly any education system. There were only 120,000 students in the whole country going to receive higher education. So those who were confronted with that at the time of independence had this tremendous job of building India as it were. And as you know, IITs were built, etc., etc. But today, uh, India was once called, famously called, ship to mouth country. So the wheat would come in large ships. I was very young at that time, more younger than you. And I remember queuing up outside the shops to get ration home. This was in Delhi, Port of So India has gone through this. You are looking at India, you are going to look at your country at a time when India is at the juncture of real takeoff. It has an amazingly talented young population, such as yourself. It has the fastest growing... Uh, it has brought in, for example, women in education. My grandmother never went to college. My mother never went to college. You, a lot of us won't remember our mothers having gone to college. 
but I don't think there's anybody sitting here. Daughters do not go to college. So India in that sense has achieved producing the largest number of vaccines for the world. If India stops making vaccines in Africa, we will not get immunized, and so on and so forth. But you just step aside on the other side, India has the largest number of tuberculosis cases, it has larger, very large number of very poor people, it has tremendous inequalities, environment is degrading, it's very difficult to live in a city, etc., etc. So these challenges are the ones that you have to take as a massive achievement that we should all celebrate. But there's a whole lot that needs to be taken care of. And since you are the privileged one who received it, Master of Business. Master of Business. Master of Business. Master of Business.